Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here with more fun with foundation paper piecing. This time we're going to make a mini pineapple. Now you might panic looking at it, but if you've been doing any foundation paper piecing so far, this is actually going to be a breeze. Now the pattern's been sorted into colour with the single colour that makes the vertical and horizontal at the bottom and then the other parts at the top. So you can see I've already cut and organised these in the order that I'm going to be stitching them. Okay, so I'm going to position the square right in the centre in the dotted position line. And do note that's very close to the dash line, but you want it within the dotted line. And to keep it in place, I'm just going to use a tiny bit of fabric glue. Now this does have the disadvantage of covering the parts that we are next going to sew, but the fact that we have these triangles means we can basically uh, position them against the edge equidistant between the top and the bottom of the square and pin it in place. And you'll note how um, the points of the triangle kind of hit certain parts of the pattern. So that's always a good way of being able to gauge whether you've got it in the center. We are then going to stitch along the very short line between part one and two. Reverse stitching at the start and end. And trimming the, fab uh, trimming the threads. If there is a pattern where you are going to get in a mess, it will be this one. So make sure to just take your time, line things up, be careful with your sewing and trim your threads as you go and you should come out fine. Finger presser here, just folding this over. Again, if there was a pattern where pressing with the iron as you're working would come in handy, this would most likely be it. So basically parts two, three and four are going to be triangles on each edge of that square. Now don't panic, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, I'm basically going to show you the first couple of rounds and then it's the same all the way until the end. There was various different ways of me doing this in organising the pattern. Um, for instance, I could have used strips, um, but there was going to be a lot of trimming and waste in that. So I actually went for triangles and I've kind of done it in a way that's going to give you the minimum amount of waste for this one. The pattern takes six colours in all. You've got one colour that will cover a lot of the pattern and then basically there'll be a round of one colour, a round of another colour and so on and so on. You'll see as the pattern forms and comes out at the end. But basically, if you want to, you could do those five colours in one colour. And then the last one, which has four different uh, squares that are cut into triangles, in another colour. So that would be the white ones you're seeing top right of this um, picture. Okay, going in with part four. <laughs> Again, you've got various different points. You can just check where your uh, that your alignment is spot on. In this case, the the points of the triangles facing to the right would be a great way of just checking. And of course, I'm using foundation paper for this, um, as opposed to tracing paper or copy paper. It has many advantages, and in this case, it's definitely a bonus because I can see through it. So I can check that actually this piece should fit in within that dashed uh, line area as I fold it back. So I can see through the pattern and make sure that's happening. 
next triangle going in. So this will be the last piece in the first round. We're then going to do some trimming and do the second round that will bring in one of our additional colours. So let's call round one that we've just sewn our main colour. That's the white. <coughs> Excuse me. Pressing this back. Okay, so now for the trimming. Basically, you are going to want to trim back two lines six, seven, eight, and nine. So we basically put a piece of cardstock in, fold back along the dash line that separates that part, uh, part six from everything else, and then trim with our add a quarter ruler. Repeat for part seven. Then part eight. Essentially, you're basically creating an alignment guide by cutting this fabric for each of the next pieces, which will involve our the first of our secondary colours. So when you've trimmed and you turn it over, this is what it will look like. Now the first of our secondary colours is going to go in here. Again we will position it equidistant along that edge and if you've cut and sewn as shown you should find that the point of that triangle will actually rest right on the point of that inner square. So now we stitch along that line that separates part six from part, uh, part one. Let's say that. Basically, you're stitching on the edge closest to the center of the design for each part. That might make it make sense. Trimming as normal. And folding back as normal. And you can see again how they kind of line up with those dash lines underneath. Next up, part seven. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but what I try and do as I'm working, especially on patterns like this, is kind of get a regularity to it. So I'm always working with the flat edge on the left hand side. That also then gives me access to pin it from the right hand side. And I'm getting an idea each time that things are looking similar or the same because we're working on a repetitive design. If I start doing it from different angles and all that, then I might sort of lose track. So that's just a handy tip. It's not a rule.
Okay, so folding that back again. And you can see how it's very similar to that first round. We're stitching those triangles in sequence around the previous layer. And this is how it's going to work throughout that entire pattern until you get to the end. I suppose I should have put a spoiler alert in there. I'm not sure if I've mentioned the Facebook group yet, as it was 10 minutes ago we started this video. If I haven't, then please do feel free to come along and join and share what you're making with these blocks. Um, so far, it's been amazing seeing what everybody's been making and the color choices they've been using. Um, so thank you to everyone that's done that so far. Uh, where can you find it? You basically find it on Facebook, Gentleman Crafters. Oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. I'll leave a link below the video in the description on YouTube and, of course, below the video on my website where you can download this pattern. Uh, that's gentlemancrafter.com. But you knew that already, right? Okay, next up, the last triangle for this round. And you can see how the points from the previous, from the first square, are now touching the edges of this second round. This one is definitely a bit more time consuming than the others we've made, so do consider it. Uh, do consider um, combining it with maybe even plain blocks and, and spreading them out in a checkerboard fashion. That way, you don't necessarily have to make as many. If you're making a smaller project like a cushion cover, then for sure go ahead and make a bunch of them and stitch them all together. They certainly give a very um, stylized look uh, if you want to top stitch on top of it as well and do some uh, quilting go for it for me these these patterns though are very uh, much eye-catching and don't necessarily need a lot of extra right so that's rounds one and two two so we then do the trimming thing again this time going for the next round of numbers so where are we at one two three four five six, seven, eight, nine. so we'll go 10 11 12 and 13 and remember you're not cutting the paper this time you're just cutting the fabric we don't cut the paper until we get right to the end and we put everything together. This add a quarter ruler is great for this because it has a little lip that you can butt against the folded cart and paper. So it gives you the perfect quarter inch. If however you want to use your regular quilting ruler, by all means go for it. Okay, there we go. That's rounds one and two done. And as I say, you would basically continue in this fashion all the way through to the end, which is where I'm about to skip to. There we go, okay. So there's my last four pieces in place. So I'm now going to fold these back and you will see how that pattern formed. So I basically worked in rounds alternating between the main color and working through the secondary colors. 
Thank goodness it's all numbered, right? Solid colours or very ditzy patterns might work much better for this, but generally use whatever you've got available. Now we get to the trimming bit where we trim all the paper and the fabric and that's up against the solid line that surrounds the block. Not the dashed line, otherwise you'll have trimmed away your seam allowance. So this took around, I think it's around 20, 25 minutes to do the single block. So like I said earlier, if you want to spa um, space these out with other blocks or solid blocks in between, that's probably a better idea if you're doing a much larger project and don't have much time. And as I said, very little waste. You can see just these tiny little bits at the end. Okay, that's it for this one. Thank you very much. Look out for next week and we've got a way of using up all of your scraps. I'll see you then. <laughs>